This video was made possible by Angel Spit's amazing supporters on Patreon. Get a free track and a new blipvert every month. You keep us going. Not only does OBS display cameras, but it also displays video files, images, text, screen captures, and more craziness. It's a good idea to have a hold screen. This is a scene with an image or a video with overlaying text showing who you are and what the show is. I flip to the whole screen at the beginning and the end of a stream. It's also a great cover in case anything goes wrong if my mic blows out or whatever, or the MIDI goes down, just flip to the whole screen. As mentioned, video is awesome for overlaying on top of your camera, and you can put it into a continuous loop and specify that it plays even when it's not active. So no matter what scene's going on, the video is still playing and you're just gonna jump in at that video, it's kind of like changing channels. The show keeps going, even though you're not watching it. But you can also place it in a scene and specify that it plays when the scene is selected then goes to black at the end. This is an awesome way to show pre-recorded content. Overlays are great fun. We call them drums. I don't know why we call them drums. It was just a cool random decision at the time. An overlay is a graphic that sits on top of your stream and the stream carries on behind it. It's a PNG file with a transparency. When you import a PNG file, OBS will preserve that transparency. So you can still see through the transparency to all of the layers that are under it. So the video files, your text and everything else. Here's an example of an overlay. Here's another example. Overlays are great because you can brand them to fit the gig theme or the festival or put a URL on it. You can do anything. Get inventive, it's great fun. Here I've designed a version for multiple screens. On-screen text is really important. It directs people to your merch and your tips and your links and whatever you want. I found it's best to have a link to a page on your website. From here, people can be directed to specific merch or donations or tips or links or whatever you want specifically for that show. Make sure this link is easy to remember as people will usually be manually typing it in. The link I use is angelspit.net forward slash rock. Of course it is. I update it for each show and it's always live as the archive videos from the gigs on YouTube will also link to this URL. So no matter what in the future, it's gonna be there and all the important stuff is on that page. Another very important thing you need is a virtual merch person. I am lucky that I have Eric from the band Spank the Nun. When I do a show, Eric is logged onto YouTube, Twitch and Facebook. He's dropping my links in the chats during the show. If I mention a CD or the tips link, Eric puts the links in the chat so all people can just click on it and go there quickly. Eric's also awesome because he's a killer graphic designer. He helped me out with a lot of those overlays. And he's also really good fun to brainstorm with. It's great having someone you can brainstorm a show with because you can take it to the ridiculous. And the ridiculous is good. Check out his band, Spank the Nun. It's awesome. Another piece of fun advice. Quite often when I do a live stream, I'll take all the songs in the set, I'll make them into a, an, an album, an EP, put that album on Bandcamp for free, and that will get traffic to Bandcamp. OBS allows you to mix audio from your laptop's microphone plus several USB inputs, including the cameras and the USB mixers and the videos and whatever. I only use the one USB input from the mixing desk. I disable all of the other audio inputs because I don't want any other audio going into that stream. So all of this is potentially awesome, but you will be inhibited by two big factors. One is your internet bandwidth, and two is your computer's processing power. Because when the stream lags and skips, it's like pulling teeth. Here's how to keep your CPU processing down. Make sure that any video you use is 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second. Make sure that it's not super high broadcast quality. 
because that's going to hog up CPU power. Medium resolution is going to be just fine. Make sure the cameras are also set to 1280 by 720 at 30 frames a second. Make sure the images are also 1280 by 720. You don't need high res images to do this. And import the audio at 16 bit 44.1 stereo. How far is your computer from the Wi-Fi hub? If possible, connect via an ethernet cable. Remember, this is all about upload speed, not download speed. Next, do a test stream to Twitch. OBS displays the CPU usage and the internet bandwidth details in the bottom right hand corner. If the stream is choppy or it lags or it skips, reduce the output stream resolution and the frame rate. Here are my broadcast specs. The output resolution is 960 by 540. Let me say that again, 960 by 540 at 20 frames per second. Terrible, isn't it? The video bit rate is 2,500 kilobits per second. The audio bit rate is 192 kilobits per second. So I'm streaming at kind of low quality and there's a reason for that. And that's because if I go any higher because of my internet connection, I'm gonna lag and I'm gonna skip and it sucks. Now if you need to decrease the bandwidth, here's how. Go into settings, click on video, decrease the screen dimensions to 1024 by 720 and the frame rate to 24 frames a second. If problems persist, drop these values even more. I also run audio at 192 kilobytes per second mono because most people are going to be watching this on their phone so mono versus stereo is not a deal breaker. Ultimately, the audience does not care too much about lower quality, but audiences hate lags and skips in the video. They can't stand it. If it's too choppy, you'll lose the audience. Unfortunately, OBS will only allow you to stream to one site. You can choose this in the stream tab of the settings area. If you want to simultaneously stream to several sites, there are free services such as Restream. You can send your OBS stream to these services and they then send your stream to many different services such as YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, etc. If you're doing a festival, you'll send your stream to services like Lightstream. Lightstream can import streams from several several broadcasters, compile them and then stream them out. And the advantage of this is that it looks like one coherent stream. Your stream will be sent by real-time media protocol or RTMP. But unfortunately, at the time of this video, OBS does not import RTMPs, which doesn't mean you can't stream into OBS. You can still import someone else's content via Zoom or a Skype meeting. You just capture that application's window and audio. OBS can also stream into Zoom using the free virtual cam plugin. When you're in Zoom, when it says select your camera, you select OBS camera. This is cool because it opens up the possibility of working with another musician in real time. But one big obstacle here is the delay between the users. The delay between a user on Zoom is about one to five seconds. And even if that delay is tiny, like over one tenth of a second, it sounds obvious that you're playing behind the beat. The delay from your OBS to the web can be three to 15 seconds. And the delay from OBS to Lightstream, then to Restream, then to the web can be up to 90 seconds. Trust me, it's happened to me before. The solution is to piggyback. So you're gonna send your OBS stream via Zoom. I'm gonna import it into my OBS, then I'm gonna perform along with you. Then I will send our combined audio and video to the web. I recommend recording the show. OBS gives you this feature and you can record and stream at the same time and it's not too much of a lag on your CPU. It will record at the same rates that you stream at. So unfortunately, if you're streaming at a lower bit rate, it's gonna record it at a lower bit rate. And this will record the audio and the video. I will also record the audio to a separate device and that'll be taken at 48K 24 bit stereo. After the show, I'll compile the video and the good audio archive it and upload it to YouTube. 
from my experience, there are three main contenders for streaming sites, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. They have advantages and disadvantages, but I recommend using Restream and hitting all three. I personally think Twitch is the best. The chat features are better, plus it seems to be a great way for people to stumble upon your stream, kind of like flicking through the channels. Your audience might be 100, but during the show, up to 500 people might stumble upon your channel. Twitch is currently figuring out some of the copyright whitelisting issues. So some content is being taken down for copyright violations, which really sucks if you're a DJ. Bands in Town is a site that's widely used to promote live shows, and they've started a partnership with Twitch. Bands in Town are now working harder to promote Twitch live streams. Plus, you don't need to be a registered user to watch Twitch. Anyone can just jump on and watch it anonymously. So I hope this has encouraged and inspired you to get into live streaming. This is a new form of performance. So cool, fun, fresh ideas are gonna win. There are no rules and the crazier you go, the better. Just like everything you do, make it awesome and have fun with it. Rawr.